Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRPs was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's just dive on in and let's start off with this tweet here from ISO 2022. Let's do it. And we do see 2023 is the chasm year for tokenization adoption. Majority of financial institutions are launching projects on public blockchains. And listen, as we really kind of look at the adoption era for uh, not only just ISO 2022, but just this entire space, I would argue that this year has become the significant accelerator for adoption. Tokenization obviously being a big driver. Um, but outside of that, I mean, all of the events that we have recently seen are pinpointing to major adoption um, and increased adoption of this technology. I mean, even FedNow, technically as a launch service, was a key driver of where we are headed. And I think that we are headed into a blockchain era where blockchain will ultimately eat the world. And it's going to be crucial to understand how early you are right now, because if you don't, you will miss out on the significant ride to the top. And when I say the top, I mean truly the mass adoption point of this market. Now, here you guys have the chart of the tokenization adoption curve, 2023 being the big driver. Over here we have, and this is from BNY Mellon's latest survey. And by the way, they do also quote the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, saying the next generation of markets and securities will be tokenized or tokenization of securities, which by the way, is a quadrillion dollar plus market by itself. Um, but we do see that there is a rapid growing demand from institutional investors for tokenized securities. BNY Mellon's latest survey reveals that 97% of institutional investors agree that tokenization will revolutionize asset management with 70% expressing their willingness to pay extra for increased liquidity and faster asset turnover. Think about that. Increased liquidity and faster asset turnover. There is no doubt that financial institutions have to place a high priority on tokenizing assets in 2023 in order to meet the demands of investors. This is literally telling you that financial institutions right now are at a major point in time where they are demanded to tokenize assets. They have to put a high priority on it. That's a big deal. And we even see at the bottom there, now the majority of innovative financial institutions are launching tokenization projects on public blockchains, proving that the future of finance will be built on permissionless infrastructures as it meets the needs of security accessibility and interoperability. Time to market, cost, and scalability are becoming key decision factors. This is a big deal. Huge deal. Outside of this, we also have ISO 2022 becoming a big talking subject. Pat Thelen which is the VP of Global Account Management at Ripple, shared how Ripple is actually involved in this standard and how it is going to lay down a red carpet for them for cross-border payments. Wow, shout out to Flip the Chain for this. Check this out. What, in your view, is the benefit of efforts like ISO standards or FedNow? Um, and you know, how, what's the, what is the type of feedback that the market is giving? I think it's been um, kind of resoundingly positive. Um, ISO 2022, you know, which really allows for um, uh, not only domestically, but, you know, if you think about cross-border, uh, you know, payments, it's it's the opportunity to have standards. And, you know, I think of, uh, if you think of web one and two, you know, it's intuitive now to send an email. Uh, you've got, you know, your name, your domain, who you're sending it to, subject line, body. Now we can even do attachments like, you know, it's we're working on that in, you know, payments, blockchain, digital assets. And, you know, one of these days we'll go, it's so intuitive, but we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, but I think it takes, you know, folks uh, like the, you know, the ISO standards body, which, um, you know, Ripple has been a huge proponent of and been involved with uh, for a while. What's nice about building a brand new payment network, which RippleNet is, is you can actually have those standards inherent in the, uh, in the, in the, 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 the technology itself. And then, you know, you can do some really smart things around risk compliance uh, and uh, ensure that uh, you hit the, you know, ball out of the park there. 
So there you guys have it. And again, this is a standard that is crucial for a lot of these major blockchain centered uh, companies like Ripple. Um, I've been talking about it for a very long time. And also, by the way, from Flip the Cheney goes, ISO 222 implementing new modulars across banks in November of this year, right? Like next month, we started to already see a lot of big moves being made around the financial sector. Again, not price drivers, but big moves being made in order to actually accommodate for the technologies um, that are within the space. And when you see cross-border payments or cross-border ISO 2022 infrastructure expanding in November of this year, wow, things are moving quite fast. I keep telling you guys that it is uh, setting up the red carpet for Ripple, cross-border payments and reporting plus CBPR plus, uh, whose mission is to create a global ISO 2022 market practice and ensure common rollout and implementation of the standard by banks. The November 2023 release will cover checks, direct debits, and a few other use cases like cancellation, margin collection, etc. And here you guys have the roadmap. Again, I do think that a lot of the big moves are already being made this year. If you are you know, in this space and don't think that any big moves have been made in the last year simply because of price, I want you all to understand that this market, it, it really is a completely different scene than anything else out there. Price is not going to be driven by these events. What's going to happen though, is these events on the macro side of things are what needs to be put in place in order for those macro prices that everyone has been talking about for years and years and years to finally be realized in. So we are seeing the major adoption of tokenization as a service through the institutional grade sector. Now is the time we are seeing every single major global entity talking about BlackRock, the DTCC, SWIFT. They're all talking about tokenization. The BIS, the central bank of central banks is literally talking about tokenization and the new monetary system. I'm telling you guys, keep track of this. And the outline here around CBP um, R plus and ISO 2022 is aligning perfectly. And here you guys have the roadmap. Cross-border payments and reporting plus CBP R plus is a work group of uh, payments experts whose mission is to create global ISO 2022 market practice and implementation guidelines to ensure a common rollout and implementation of the standard by banks. Here we have how it can define ISO 2022 messages and how they are being utilized for cross-border payments and cash reporting on the SWIFT network and are to be validated as well. And we see over there, it's composed of payment experts from PMPG communities and a handful of non-PMPG uh, banks nominated by SWIFT. And um, when we look at the next slide here, we can see the full release, November 2023. It will cover all of these major areas. So as we really kind of look at what is going on here, there is some big events happening next month regarding the entire financial sector. I'm telling you guys, these are not price drivers. Do not expect XRP to pump from it. If it does, hey, that's great. That's another added benefit, but don't expect price action from these big events, but I want you guys to understand that everything is aligning perfectly for the big bang events behind crypto. And that big bang event behind crypto, guess what it is? The go live. Going live with DLT and blockchain dominated systems. That is what's going to push the demand like you've never seen it before. Outside of this, we see from ISO 2022, let's do it. It's going to be utilizing demand liquidity and ISO compliant digital assets. Check this out. So here's the full on news regarding this from October 4th. This is from Binance's website. Binance looking to combine ISO 2022 and blockchain. And we actually see um, this is a blog post entitled Getting to Grips with International Crypto Liquidity and ISO 2022 Tokens. The potential opportunities of combining blockchain technology with ISO 2022 are discussed below. The development of digital assets that are compliant has already begun. This means that cryptocurrency transfers could be uh, better integrated into the SWIFT payment system and the quality of on-demand liquidity services would be improved. Big statement there. Then we see here, this is just rehashing what we just read. Um, on the third slide, we have another possible scenario. This is really just kind of talking about, you know, creating common standards and um, just the robust framework behind this and how it could be tailored to specific needs, accommodating new developments and regional requirements. And then also at the bottom, we have the lack of on-demand liquidity. When a business or individual makes a global payment, their funds are tied up during the often lengthy process. This reduces their overall liquidity, making it challenging to allocate capital efficiently for personal or business needs. Again, enter in, 
That's right, Nostro Vostro accounts, eliminating that. There was once a time where we thought there was $27 trillion within those systems because that's what uh, Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz and a few other players from the uh, you know scene were, were really kind of talking about. There is a lot of money in those pre-funded accounts. Um, when we really kind of eliminate that, guess what? That's extremely valuable because that's direct liquidity being injected into the system. It's a game changer. And re remember, like when we talk about ISO 222, we've regarded these uh, these major moves being made by banks for a while around the standard. Um, this has been a thing that we've been talking about forever since going all the way back to like late 2022. Um, and it's all because of Bob Way, who is a former Ripple employee on why this is so extremely helpful for for uh, Ripple's bank sales team, um, because this is way bigger than what anyone could think of. Right. And, you know, don't take it from me. Take it from Bob Way, who has been working within this area forever. He's a previous employee at Ripple um, and he even talked about how this is going to demand banks to actually rethink their overall uh, technology stack. And with this. It's required that banks need to implement new technology. It helps the overall burden um, that you know Ripple is trying to bring to banks, which is it is a burden technically to bring new technology for them because guess what? They want to run on the traditional rails. Nothing. They don't want to change anything. They change something. All of a sudden, they have to have IT come in, and that's extremely expensive. Outside of that, though, when we really kind of look at this, now banks don't have a choice, and it's a mandatory change. For the first time in a very, very long time, it's a mandatory change. And when we look at this, well, they're going to tap into the most efficient technology possible. This is a huge deal. And I keep saying it, and I keep saying it over and over again because I don't think people realize how big of a move ISO 2022 actually is. This is going to put everything in motion, not price wise. But implementation wise, we're already starting to see the discussions around this. We already heard from Pat Thelen himself how ISO 2022 fits their overall goal with cross border payments, which is a $156 trillion market projected to be $250 trillion within the next four years. And it's now almost three years. But all of the banks, like November 2023, this year, next month, major changes around the financial sector are going to happen. And I do believe that we are going to get to the big bang event regarding crypto probably by the end of, you know, this year where we really kind of start to see major implementation. Um, I believe that there was a direct quote from an individual at a financial institution. I cannot think of the name, but basically what he said is 2023 is the year for institutional building. 2024 is the time for implementation. And it would make sense, especially, especially with the standardization being put in place. I mean, just think about Zenfin with XDC, right? We've seen electronic trade documents bill go live. The next day, not even 24 hours later, you had Lloyd's Bank completing the first transactions utilizing digital processes. This is a big deal. So as we look at ISO 2022 and the go live time frame around this, this is going to put everything in motion, in my opinion. This is a huge standard simply because guess what? It requires the banks to implement new age technology. And a lot of that new age technology is DLT, blockchain. It might not directly you know, change the price, I don't really care if it does. What I care about is, guess what? We're ushering in to the age of blockchain and DLT, where a lot of these incredible technologies can now finally be harnessed and embraced. And I do believe that XRP is very well one of them. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because of more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.